went on a residential trip in year, no, in year five, 13th of October 2011. I was at school on a Friday. My mum was picking me up. She was in the playground waiting for me with one of my friend's mum. And I remember her going up to the teacher. I like literally remember it like it was yesterday. She went up to, she was like, oh, I just have to go and speak to Miss St. John Minna. I was like, oh, okay. So I waited with my friend's mum and she went up and told him that my dad had passed away. And then I was sitting down on the sofa and my mum and mum's ex were like, we need to speak to you. So they turned the telly off. I was sitting in between both of them and my mum started telling me. She started, she was like, so you know Mark isn't your dad. And then she started crying so she couldn't tell me. So my mum's ex started telling me. And then he taught, he said, you know how I'm not your dad? Well, your real dad has like died. He passed away of a heart attack. And so, yeah, that affected me a lot. In Somerset, it is estimated that 3 in 30 young people have a diagnosable mental health condition, and the county shows the least improvement following psychological therapy. Around 1 in 8 children aged between 5 and 19 in the UK are estimated to have at least one mental health disorder. Around 5.4% of the population have been reported as having suicidal thoughts in the last year, and this has increased by 3.8% since the year 2000. One in 30 people in Somerset have a mental health illness and there are around 1,500 people just in Yeovil College. This means around 50 people have struggled with their mental health. We interviewed people from our college community who are happy to share their experience. We did this to get more of an insight into the way different people cope with their illnesses. My name is Shannon Shepherd. Hello, I'm Megan Weston. Currently, um, I'd say my biggest issue is OCD, anxiety and depression, uh, but also generalised anxiety, depression. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good, I think. At the moment, I'm probably doing the best I kind of ever have been. Um, I don't know, I've, I've struggled with mental illness for quite a long time, since I was quite young. And uh, now that I'm kind of an adult, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not with any services, and I'm, I'm probably coping the best I ever have done, just being on my own. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult because Obviously there's elements that are quite helpful when you're in a crisis situation but there's also elements that generally just as a person you struggle with such as the kind of confinement, not being able to just go outside whenever you choose or just something simple like being able to watch TV when you want. But um, having like 24 hour support and being kept in a very like bubble like environment uh, that can be really helpful for some people. I was on a section two, I believe, under the Mental Health Act, so I was uh, unable to leave for a month. Um, over that, the course of that time, I was made informal, so I was technically uh, able to appeal and leave if they agreed. I ended up staying in the unit for four months. A mental health ward in Wales is set to move to Yeovil. The ward is set to move because of the distance between its nearest emergency room. Wales is 22 miles away from its local emergency department. The new ward, which would be placed in Yeovil, would be less than one mile from the emergency room, therefore decreasing the amount of time it would take to transport someone. This could save more lives and drastically improve the ward. It's, it's bittersweet again because there's obviously a lot of people in the area where it currently is that do need the help and I, I do wonder what's going to happen to the people that are currently inpatient there. 
but the fact that it is being moved and, and the reason that it's being moved is so that it's closer to a general hospital so that when people have incidents they can actually receive proper treatment as soon as possible and uh, I think that's good because you, you never know how severe like uh, an incident can become in a place like that and having to travel an hour or so by ambulance to get to a hospital for treatment could be really dangerous so it's a good thing and a bad thing. They're definitely not perfectly fine but you have to remember that things like this are very person to person basis. What works for one person won't work for another person and that's just generally how it goes with treatment for something like this because obviously every case is, is different for each individual person. Unfortunately the NHS is obviously quite underfunded and the wards suffer from that. Uh, we could do with a lot more funding but uh, it just it depends it really depends unit to unit it depends on the staff depends on the support the doctors involved some people thrive some people get a lot worse it just it really does depend on the person.